Thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at the photo gallery add-on that's included with FileMaker 19. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. One of the greatest assets that this photo gallery brings to the table is responsive design. So we can anchor the web viewer, and as it grows and shrinks, the JavaScript will rearrange the images to make maximum use of that space. Now the configuration it comes with is that when you click on an image, you get a card window that shows you some details. But that script could do anything. And because the images are being displayed in a web viewer, that opens up opportunities for displaying other formats that don't display in a container field. When you load it up, this is what you're going to get. It's a web viewer that's displaying images from a table. And they have, the heights of them have been constrained so that they fit nicely into rows. And then they've been organized in such a way that it makes this nice justified collage of images. If we click on an image, it'll bring a card window up that gives us the title and the scaled width and height and the image. Now this alone is useful because in FileMaker, we've always been constrained to showing container fields in a list. Our image size is, can't be any larger than the container field. We get an image per row and the best we can do with images in native FileMaker is to use some calculations to extend list view into a grid. And we could make them buttons that open card windows. We could get all that functionality. But this idea of this dynamic resizing is what makes this really useful. By simply anchoring the web viewer to all four sides, I get this functionality. Where the images will scale and the wider I get, the more it fits on a row. And at this point, you see I'm not even scrolling because all my images fit on this layout. So while this is scalable, it also, I can go very small. And now all of my pictures are in a vertical column. And it's worth remembering that when I click on this, this is showing me a FileMaker layout. So this could point to any layout with increased functionality inside of this card window. In fact, I could have buttons in this card window that close the card window and go on and do other things. So this very dynamic gallery could actually serve as a user interface. There is a time when the user knows a piece of information by its visual association and doesn't necessarily remember the name of the piece of data that you would search using text. This really opens up some potential for some image-based user interfaces that are dynamic. Now, it's important to note that when we click on an image, it's the scaled width and height that's determining the ratio. Now, we could do this in a completely distorted manner. Hit close. Now, it's not modifying the original image at all. It's just how it's presenting it, but it's a very squished image. And the height of these images have adjusted so that it can complete its look. Likewise, if we click in here and we make the height the smaller, we end up with a very wide image. The height of this one reduces to fill the row. And that's how we get this nice justified image block kind of look. Now let's look at some configuration. I'm back at my default. This is exactly what you get when you drag it in. We go into our configurator and we see that it's using the sample data table, primary key and the field that provides the image must be in base64, unless the image is hosted. In order for a field to show up in this list, it must be present on the layout that you've selected. Notice the base64 field and the primary key field are on this layout. We can go into our settings, and by default, it is set up to use rows, but we can switch this to columns. And down here is the number of columns. And then let's see what that looks like. It didn't automatically refresh, and this might happen to you. I just go into layout mode and I come back and it will force the web viewer to reload. And now we see that the image's widths have been constrained to be standardized. We don't have this justified base anymore, but we do have a, a width control. It will try to figure out where to best place things. We have no control over the placement of these images. 
if we look at our full width layout, now notice I'm using the exact same data and it's displaying differently. That's because these are two different instances, which means they have different configurations. So I go into settings here, I'm gonna switch this to row. We're gonna set this to five columns and browse refresh. Now let's look at how this is laid out. It's a very narrow layout and this web viewer is taking up all of the body and it has been anchored to all four sides. When I'm in browse mode, this means I can scale this down. Now notice, unlike the rows where the images would just rearrange in order to show all five columns, all images have to scale up and down all the time. If I click on this image and I change its scaled width one to four ratio, well, notice we get a very long image versus if I do the opposite, what I'm gonna get is a very short image because we're constrained by the width. So these images I've loaded up from the internet. This is a Czechoslovakian father goes on walks with his children. They collect acorns and he started making these cute little figurines. And um, I loaded them up in here and we can see that some are different sizes and it accommodates that. But mostly they follow this normal uh, ratio here. Even using the sample data, when you create your own records, they will not come in with the scaled width and height. If we remove this, we're gonna see that in this particular image set, I'm gonna get some strange functionality. So it's important to know that you need to have values in those fields. Another thing you may have noticed down here is that this is an animated GIF. And because this is showing this gallery in a web viewer, your animated GIFs will work. Additionally, this is a file that cannot be rendered in a web viewer. So you'll wanna take precautions to filter that stuff out from your source found set. Let's talk about the query field. If we go into our settings and we click on filter and we try to pick our query field, we can't pick anything. And the reason for that is because there is no field on this layout for the query. If we go to the table of photo gallery, which is where our HTML and our configuration is stored, the add-on has provided a query field. Now you don't have to use this field. This is just here for a quick setup. Now when I go into browse mode and I click on my configurator, and I go to my filter, that field is available. That gets us part the way there. Now I would like to point out, so if we click on the poppies, we see that their title has the word California. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna put it in this query field. Now nothing happens. And that makes sense because we haven't run a script. We haven't told it to do anything. But if I go into layout mode and I come back into browse mode, it does work. And the reason for that is when the web viewer is loaded, the script will look into the query field. And in that way, you can programmatically provide a value. And it doesn't have to be this query field. It could be any field, perhaps in the example of like a newspaper looking into an image library to only present images that relate to that edition. But for now, we're talking about a query field and we need to make a button. So let's click on this button. The first time picks the group, the second time picks the button. We hold down the option key and we drag it over here. So let's change our icon to a magnifying glass because it's now a fine field. And we're gonna change our script to photo gallery refresh. And now if we look at this script, we see the very first step that is executed is to set the variable to the script parameter. So we need to set the script parameter to be the add-on UUID. If we click on the script parameter that came from the configurator button, that provided it in a JSON object, but we don't need to do that. So we can remove everything but the actual UUID. We have one more thing we need to do. Let's go and remove the hide object properties because we did copy the configurator button and that doesn't apply to our find button that we need available to everyone. So now you might find that when you remove this, that it actually auto refreshes. And that's because this web viewer is constantly refreshing. So the timing was just right. But if we put the value back in and we push the button, we now are limited to our California poppies. We're gonna leave that button there because some people like to push a button, but let's also 
set up a script trigger that does the exact same thing on object exit. We're going to go down to photo gallery refresh and I'll paste it in here. All I have to do is tab out and it will refresh the web viewer. I wanted to provide you with a very basic practical example. In this database, if we look at the relationships, I've made a table called parent and I've added a field called foreign key to my sample data and I've keyed them together. So it's a very basic relationship. And then I went into my configurator and under filter, I set up the query field to be primary key, which is important that this primary key field be on this layout. And then it will search in the foreign key in the photo gallery sample data, which is the table of the layout that I have selected in the required fields. And now as I move through the records, it will perform that search, which gives me the same result as if I had a portal showing me container fields. If I go into list mode, I can see my groups here. And if I click this popover button, I can also see my groups and they will fit in this space nicely. I also modified this layout to have this field on here. And if I want to move this from the flowers group into the leaves group, I hit close. It disappears out of here. It's now in the leaves group and I can just as easily send it back. I'm going to start with an empty file and I'm going to go into layout mode. You may need to reveal your objects pane. Make sure that add-ons is clicked and then come down and click this add-on plus button. This will bring up the JavaScript add-ons and we click the photo gallery. We see a preview. We see that it's going to install some tables, some layouts and some scripts. We click choose. And at this point, it is installed into our file. If we look at our database, we can see that it put in a table and it put in some sample data. If we look at our scripts, we see that it installed quite a few scripts. And if I hold down the option key and close that. Now to use this, I simply need to click it and drag it onto my layout. Now, when I go into browse mode, I'll see that it brought in all the sample data and clicking the configurator shows me that it is connected to my sample data table. I'm going to click on my group and then click on my web viewer and scale that up and I can click the photo gallery and drag it on a second time. And now I have two instances of the same add on on the same layout. I'm going to go into the configuration of this first one and I'm going to switch that over to columns and we'll make it a high number like six. And we will leave the second one as is. And I'm going to go into layout real quick and come back. That's a way to trigger it to refresh. And we can see that we're using the same data from the same source. We're just displaying it differently. So the difference between an instance and a copy is this add on new UID. So if I click on this and I copy it and I navigate to a different layout and I paste it, both of those web viewers will use the same configurator. But if it has a separate UUID, it will have a unique configurator. I hope you're inspired to check out the photo gallery add on. And remember that liking a video is a great way to let us know we're producing the content that you find useful. Also, we have a video fundamentals for using FileMaker JavaScript add-ons that will cover concepts that are universal to all the JavaScript add-ons. You can subscribe to our channel if you want to get updates when we put out a new video. And thanks for joining us.